Hey guys, welcome back to my last video of this uh, Central NAT demo. I am sorry that it took me two weeks to do this from the, the last Central NAT um, video to this one. I lost my voice for a while. That's why I sound kind of weird. Anyways, I got to wrap this up. So the last video of the series, we saw Central NAT and we saw how we had rules whereas uh, they were defined in a separate table instead of them being directly on uh, the firewall policy and that's where the central net um, option comes from so uh, in this video what we're gonna do is essentially create a DNAT rule so in the old version in the old version it's not old in the default version of how we do our DNAT is that we create a virtual uh, IP address object and that virtual IP address object becomes the destination within the FortiGates firewall policy well that's actually not how it works now with a central NAT situation. It's quite interesting. Uh, there is a DNAT table and all the DNAT rules happen in that table. So, and then the kernel just makes a little, a little uh, cache of that particular IP address and does the NATting regardless of what's on the firewall policy as long as there's a firewall policy going back into the, the DMZ over here pretty confusing to explain so let's just do it so once again in this video we're gonna do DNAT with a central natting table so here we go uh, let's go ahead and log into our FortiGate if I can remember the password alright yep I know I did not shut it down properly okay so I've also been using this lab environment for a couple of my classes, so that's why it's kind of trashed looking, so I apologize. But uh, if we go down here to our to our objects and policies, you'll see that we have a DNAT and virtual IP address, which is different from the central SNAT table. So what we're going to do is that we're going to define the VIP, the virtual IP address, to go from the outside world to the in here so let's go ahead and say create new and it does feel like creating a, a virtual IP address so we're gonna say web server okay and I'll just leave any interface that's fine alright and then the external IP address is going to be 10.200.1.50 now if you guys remember our lab environment here uses the real interwebs, the internet, so we can't make up private, public, I mean public IP addresses. So we just make believe that anything that starts with 10 200 is public. So um, anyways, even though this interface right here is going to be 10.200.1.1, uh, we're going to make a, a DNAT rule that is dot .50 to NAT inside our web server that's kind of what we're doing here so and then the IP address inside our DMZ is a 172.16.1.10 and that's our web server itself so there are some additional filters that you can do here and because ours is a web server those are the only services we're gonna allow through now this is gonna make more sense when we write our firewall policy. So let's go ahead and hit OK. So we now have almost a separate table, and these are evaluated um, top down, right? That has these rules. And now, because nothing happens without a firewall policy, we go into our IP4 policy, we hit a create new, and I'm going to call this the DMZ. And what's interesting is our incoming is our WAN popping out our DMZ. And because the internet's a big place, we'll just say all. And what's interesting is that we can put all right here in the destination. And that does not necessarily mean that all is going to be allowed through per se. It means that we don't have to define all the VIP objects here or all the separate services here. So the whole idea of having a separate table for your DNAT is that you can define them all in one place instead of having tons of firewall policies um, messing up your, not messing up, but cluttering your your FortiGate's firewall policies. So in fact, you know, we might have, we might have a filter for 
several things. Here we go. And as you can see, there's no NAT options here. So we just say OK. And that's because we're doing all the filtering in the DNAT table. So all right, let's see if it worked. So we're going to go to the other side of the internet here. This is just a, a PC that's representing the, the outside world. And let's go to 10.200.1.50. And as you can see, we're accessing our, our web server. So the DNAT rule did work. So guys, that concludes my, my little natting uh, series there. So we looked at our traditional default policy-based natting and then also our central natting. And this video was the, the DNAT. Uh, options. So once again, um, it's not defined on the firewall policy itself, but in a separate table. So I hope you guys found that helpful. And uh, I think my next set of videos I'll eventually record here are going to be about uh, the Forda Manager and the Forda Analyzer. So I hope to see you guys then and uh, take care. So bye.